My husband and his affair partner died in a car accident, leaving behind their two kids, now everyone expects me to take them in and raise them as my own like a good mom should. Posted by you slash scaredy cat 1122. My, 45F, husband, 49M, of 23 years had an affair with a 20-year-old girl starting in 2020. I found out this year when his affair partner gave birth to twin boys in March. Obviously, we were going to divorce. We've been hashing things out since then, it's been a lengthy process due to some properties we own in common, and we needed to get an accountant because he used the shared account for his affair. Finally, things seemed to be getting close to the end when both my husband and the woman he cheated with were killed in a car crash. By some miracle, the twin babies were not harmed in the crash. Now they are orphaned and neither set of grandparents can take them in permanently. My husband's parents are both in assisted living, he had no siblings, and the only aunt who could take them refuses. She's been child-free her whole life. On the woman's side, I'm not sure of all the details, but her parents are also unable to be involved long-term, and her only sister lives overseas. Since we were still married and he had not updated his will, all his assets are set to pass to me and our two children. I'm not callous enough to leave those babies with nothing, so I agreed to let whoever becomes their legal guardian have the remaining balance in the shared account, about 25k in savings. The issue is that no one wants to take them in. Now my in-laws are pressuring me to take them in and raise them. The problem is, I don't want to, at all. I wouldn't love them, and I don't want to be the evil stepmother. But I know a big part of me will always have some level of resentment toward them. I would probably favor my own children. It's not their fault, but I truly loved my husband, and I thought we were happy before I found out about the affair. We have two daughters, 14 and 16. Obviously, we had disagreements, but we never insulted each other before. Then I found out about the affair, and he began calling me names and blaming me for his cheating. He became abusive and even tried to kick me out of the house, my childhood home, which is not shared property, for the record. I'm also raising teenagers alone now. I don't have the energy to raise babies anymore. My daughters hate their baby brothers. I tried to get them to spend time with their dad as we were divorcing, but they refused. Since this all came out because of the babies, there wasn't really a way to sugarcoat the situation. And they are also too old for me to get away with it. Most of my friends agree it's not my place to care for those children, but my in-laws, the affair woman's parents, and my mother want me to raise them. I know my mom is just having grandkids fever, but it hurts not to have her support. I have to make a decision by next week, or the boys will be going into foster care. At the moment, they are temporarily placed with their maternal grandparents. I feel horrible, but I am very sure I can't take them in. Would I be wrong if I refused to take them in? First update. Hey everyone, this blew up far more than I thought, and I appreciate the well wishes for my girls, the boys, and myself. Also, thank you to the many lovely people offering to help give the twins a good home. I might not be their mother, but it touches me and makes me glad there are good people out there. After thinking carefully, speaking to my lawyer, reading responses, doing research, etc., I plan to speak to the grandparents tomorrow and refuse to take legal guardianship of the boys. I will let them know the usernames of people who offered to me for private adoptions or fostering, but my daughters are my priority. It will be up to the twins' grandparents to decide if they'll proceed with adoption, keep them, or turn them over to the state. I wish I had the mental capacity to be the person to do this, but I have two girls who are going through a lot, and they need my full attention. I'll also be talking to the lawyers to figure out if the boys have any inheritance claim properly. If they do, I'll separate it and leave it to the lawyers to do what they need to do for them to have access when it's best. If they don't, I'll find a way to ensure they have access to the 25k I was going to give them from the beginning. I won't do more, however. My moral compass might be biased, but I don't believe I'm obligated, morally or legally, to do more than what the law says. I can't help everyone, and I shouldn't have to. I have two girls who lost their father, two girls who need therapy, two girls who are just about to go to college. They've gone through enough without seeing their mother favor the children of their father's mistress. Second update. Hey everyone, as I mentioned two nights ago, I went yesterday to speak to the twins' grandparents. I explained my position and refused to take guardianship of the boys. My mother-in-law almost slapped me when I said that, but thankfully, this was all done in a public place, and my father-in-law stopped her. The maternal grandparents kept pleading for me to raise them since they didn't want to lose them. I kept saying no, and when they called me selfish, I lost it. I told them to their faces that the only selfish people in this mess were them and their son and daughter. Their son, my husband, for cheating and then making the divorce hell for me and my girls. Their daughter because she was a WH re, I used another word, who went after a married man twice her age. I told them if I heard from them again, I would request a cease and desist. I also informed my parents in law that they won't have access to my daughters for the foreseeable future. I'll explain why in a bit. We were at a restaurant, but I didn't stay for the meal. 
I also sent an email to my lawyer so he can ensure CPS and any agency involved in the welfare of the twins is aware that I'm not going to be their guardian or be involved. Then I sent an email to my in-laws with all the usernames and websites from people here on Reddit who have offered to do interviews for the twins adoption. I won't be involved beyond this point, so please, as lovely as it is, I can't help you if you are interested in the boys. Yesterday was the end of my involvement. As for why my in-laws won't see my girls, I spoke to my daughters and decided to find out more about their thoughts before I went to meet the grandparents. My youngest refused to speak to me, which I found very out of character for her. My eldest then asked for just the two of us to talk. That's when she explained that my in-laws had been going on about how the girls need to get ready to go to public school instead of their private school and get jobs right out of high school since I would have to provide the twins with private schooling and college money. Apparently, they were also told to start moving their stuff to share a room, my girls have separate rooms, since the twins need more space. This was not known to me, mostly because that would never happen. Apparently, my in-laws have been basically bullying the girls because the babies take priority. Yeah, that's not happening. I told the girls that their grandparents have no say in where they go to school, their college funds, or how the rooms are set in our house. I also said I do agree they could use a part-time job during college and maybe a scholarship, but their tuition will be paid. I told them not to blame the babies for the stupidity of the adults. They told me they understand, but they still don't want to interact with their brothers for now. That for now part gives me hope they'll get through things. For now, we're going to make some changes in the house. The girls and I both don't like that there's still an office space that my husband used. We're going to make it into a gaming room for all of us. I plan to take down some pictures that have my husband in them and put them in albums for the girls. We just want to make the house more ours. For those wondering why my girls want nothing to do with their father, my daughters were the ones who discovered the affair and told me when my husband took them to meet the twins at the hospital. He had asked them to keep it a secret, but my girls told me. After that, my husband began treating them horribly too. He burned all bridges with the girls. Third update. I spoke to a lawyer on Monday. The boys have no inheritance claim until a DNA test is done. After that, their only claim will be against my in-laws. The shared account is not considered my husband's individual property, so it's mine. The same goes for the lake house. Since he had a personal savings account and a life insurance policy, which went to his parents, that will be the only thing the boys could claim. Obviously, this could change if it goes to trial, but the lawyer told me that with how little my husband left my girls and me, there's very little chance a judge will demand our assets. The lawyer also recommended that I completely end the idea of sharing any money with the boys. That could be used against me to claim I'm taking financial responsibility for them and should be considered their guardian. I'm dividing the money from the shared account for my daughter's college tuition. I'm still unsure if I'll sell the lake house or not, but neither the girls nor I are attached to it. Now, please leave me alone about the boys' inheritance. Sad as it is, my husband messed everything up for his children. I'm not responsible for them, nor do I have to sacrifice my assets to set them up for a better life. Fourth update. There's some good news and some annoying news. The good news is that the boys were safely retrieved by CPS from their maternal grandparents and will be placed in foster care until a permanent arrangement is made. I found out when it happened because their grandparents and my mother came to scream at me at work. In all honesty, I'm glad this happened at work and not at home. It's made me consider moving as I don't want my daughters exposed to any of this. An annoyance I had soon after was getting a call about my inquiries into fostering and adopting. Apparently, my information was sent to CPS as someone interested in fostering the twins and eventually adopting. I immediately explained the situation between the grandparents and me, and the operator was speechless at first. She apologized for the situation and told me she would make sure I wasn't bothered about the process. I also got served this morning. My in-laws are suing for grandparents' rights. They are also suing for custody. Apparently, they are planning to leave their assisted living, which they really shouldn't, to buy a house that allows kids to get the twins back, and now also want custody of my daughters. My personal lawyer immediately gave me some instructions I won't share to safeguard myself and my daughters from some risks during a possible custody battle. My lawyer and I both suspect my in-laws want the girls to be parentified as caretakers for the twins since my in-laws have mobility limitations. It will be a cold day in hell before that happens. I don't see CPS placing the boys with them to begin with. Not all is bad news. I'm starting therapy next week, and my eldest daughter is once again talking about the colleges she wants to attend. We still haven't really talked about their father or gotten them to agree to visit his grave. I myself, haven't gone there, and I'm trying really hard to get used to not calling him my husband anymore. I had nothing to do with the funeral plans aside from paying bills, and from what I heard, his parents had the epitaph, devoted and beloved husband, father and son written on it. I find it a joke. I know it's bad to hold on to so much anger and resentment, but as soon as I have time, I plan to change his tombstone to remove husband and father. It might sound petty, 
but I refuse to speak well of a cheater and abuser just because he's dead. My daughters deserved better, and so did I. And for anyone complaining about me changing the tombstone, I pay for everything in the end. So, stick your complaints you know where. I don't think I'll post another update until the whole mess with the grandparents' rights lawsuit is resolved. So to the kind people who have sent support to me and my daughters, thank you so much. Maybe I'll have good news in the future. Fifth update. Hey everyone, some people have been asking me for updates, and to be honest, I had nothing until today. To start, cousins from my ex-husband's side of the family took the boys in. I know them, they are lovely, and I know they'll give the twins a great life. The new parents, calling them Matt and Kim, talk to my daughters and let them know if they ever want to reach out to their half-brothers, they just have to call. Otherwise, they can just see them as distant cousins. My girls thank them but insisted they don't really want a sibling relationship at this time, though maybe as cousins it will be okay. I did offer them the money from the shared account since they are family, but they said not to worry as they don't need it. Kim even insisted I use that money for a vacation for my girls and me. Apparently, I look like the living dead. They also set very strict boundaries with my in-laws and the parents of my ex's affair partner. They can see the boys, but they won't be seen as grandparents. This apparently caused a big fight with the affair partner's parents, and Matt and Kim then cut them off. Again, threats of suing for grandparents' rights were thrown around, but they went nowhere. That's how I found out why the affair partner's parents couldn't take the boys permanently. The father is a convicted felon in an abuse case. I won't share the details out of respect, but if what Matt and Kim told me is true, I'm glad the boys won't grow up with that man as an example. The only reason his wife had temporary guardianship was because of the sudden death of the parents and the process to find a relative to raise the boys. She would have had to live away from her husband to allow permanent custody, and she wasn't willing to do so. My ex-in-laws realized that threats were not going to work, so they agreed to be great uncles instead. Good for them, I guess. Now, they want me to let them live with me and the girls since they left assisted living recently, and the place they were in doesn't have any openings. This place has a long wait list, and the only reason they got in originally was because my ex and I offered to pay for five years in full. They still had two full years paid for, which I was going to cover. After everything they put my daughters and me through, I'd rather burn money on a grill than spend it on them. I know they want my girls and me to be their caretakers. I won't even consider it. My daughters have their own paths to follow, and honestly, I want to consider meeting someone new. I know it sounds like I'm moving on too quickly, but I've been working to move on since I found out about the affair. I don't think my ex deserves me to go through a mourning period. I already mourned our relationship. At least, that's what my eldest daughter said, funny enough. She's been encouraging me to go out and meet someone. We still have that custody lawsuit from my ex-in-laws going and a few other issues that I will update when I have more, but I wanted to at least let everyone know the boys are safe and together.